Okay, now let's talk about matrix multiplication because this one is really, really strange. Because a good guess, in fact, I think an intuitive idea for how to multiply matrices would be the following. First of all, just like addition or subtraction, you can only multiply matrices if they're the same size. That seems like a reasonable request. And then, how should you do it? You can just multiply corresponding terms. 1 times 1, 3 times 2, 2 times minus 1, and so forth. That is a great method, and you can actually use that to define your own special new kind of multiplication. But in fact, that is not what's traditionally done in multiplying matrices. And the reason why is actually an issue that will come up later. And I'll explain to you why, in fact, that method is not going to play itself out too well. But for now, I want to tell you what the actual method is, and it's quite exotic. First of all, you can't multiply things in general that have the same shape. So in fact, these two things are actually not multiplying compatible. I can't multiply this with that, even though you go, wait a minute, if it's the same shape, shouldn't you be able to multiply it? No. In fact, here's what we're going to want. This has, you'll notice, um, three columns and two rows. So it's a two by three. This is also a two by three. The rule to see if, in fact, you can multiply two matrices is to ask, are the columns here equal to the number of rows here? I want the columns here on the left, so these, to equal and number the rows on the right. So that's why I know these two things are not compatible. There are three here, but only two here. So in fact, these are not compatible. The amazing thing is, if you believe what I just said, and I invite you to do so, these two ridiculous, ridiculously different shaped matrices are multiplicatively compatible. And let's take a look at why. Well, this is a two by three, two rows, three columns. And this is a three by four, three rows and four columns. But notice that the number of columns on the left actually does equal the number of rows on the right. And that's the only test to see if, in fact, two matrices are multi multiplicatively compatible. Can I multiply them? Well, this is three columns on the left, three rows on the right. So in fact, these are. Notice, by the way, I haven't even told you how to do it yet, but notice what happens if I do this. If I just flip this, all of a sudden, they're not compatible. Do you see that? Because here I've got four columns on the left and only two rows on the right. So they're not equal. So in fact, multiplication's really crazy because like you know when you multiply regular numbers like 4 times 5, you can also multiply 5 times 4. But here you can't do that. Here you can't always just flip them. The order matters here. With multiplication, the order's going to matter. This is really weird. All right. Anyway, moving beyond its weirdness, let me tell you actually the secret in multiplying two matrices that are compatible. How do you check compatibility? The left matrix a column number must equal the right matrix row number. And the way to think about it, by the way, is to sort of go like this here, right? So go, you know, tomb, 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 and then to compare it to this. And now here's how you do it. Multiplication is really an adding and multiplying game here. What you do is you take the first row here, and you're going to sort of pin it against the first column here. And that's why it's important that these line up. You see, the number of columns here is 3, and the number of rows here is 3. So in fact, these two blue boxed-in things actually have the same number of elements in them. And now you just multiply in the following way. You take this times this, and then you go down this times this, and then you go down this times this. And you know what you do with those numbers? You add them all up. So I take 1 times 1 plus 3 times 3 plus 2 times negative 1. So I'd see 1 plus 9, which is 10, minus 2 is 8. And so the answer I'm going to get is going to be a matrix. And in the very first spot of that matrix, I'm going to write an 8. Now, how big is that matrix going to be? Like, what dimensions will it be? Well, it turns out, since this is a 2 by 3, and this is a 3 by 4, the dimensions of my answer are going to be 2 by 4. That is to say, What you do is, you see what kind of matrix this is. This is a 2 by 3. This is a 3 
by 4. To see if they're matrix multiplication compatible, these inside numbers must be the same. These inside numbers must be the same, because this represents the number of columns on the left guy. This represents the number of rows on the right person. And so they have to be equal. But if they are equal, then the matrix you get is going to have that dimension, 2 by 4, 2 by 4. And the first entry is this going to be 1 times 1 plus 3 times 3 plus 2 times negative 1. And so that's going to be 10 minus 2 is 8. Now, to get the entry right here, which is going to be in the first row but second column, what you do is go to the first row here and then the second column here. And now do that thing again. So 1, 0, 2. 1 times 1, 3 times 0, 2 times 1, and then add those numbers. 1, 0, 2. And so you get 3. If you want to find out what goes into the the spot that's in the first row, third column, you go to first row here, third column here. And now you do that trick again. So you'd see 2, 0, 10. Because 1 times 2, 3 times 0, 2 times 5, and add up. So 2, 0, 10 is 12. If you want to see what goes in this entry here, that is first row, fourth column. I go first row here and fourth column here. Do you see how these things sort of line up? Once you see it, it's actually not awful, but it just makes no sense. <laughs> here we go. Minus 1, 12, and 2. So that's going to be 1 times negative 1, 3 times 4, and 2 times 1. So that's minus 1, 12, negative uh, 2. So 12 and 2 is like 14, minus 1 is 13. So that fills up the very first row. So the first row is given by the first row of this. And for the individual columns, you just use the columns here. This gives the first column, second column, third column, and fourth column. Now I want to fill in the second row. Where do you think I go? I slide this down to there. And to figure out what goes into the very first column, I go to the first column here. And I repeat now with this thing. So here I'd see a 1 and a 12 and a 0. So that's 13. To figure out second row, second column, I go to second row, second column. And I see boom, boom, boom. I just see a 1. Because 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 0 is 0. And 0 times 1 is 0. So it's 1. Second row, third column. Second row, third column. And so I see 2, 0, 0. So I see 2. Second row, fourth column. Second row, fourth column. There you go. Minus 1, 16, 0. So that's 15. So the product of these two matrices actually is this thing here. Notice that I started off with a 2 by 3, multiplied it by a 3 by 4, and ended up with a 2 by 4. And so remember, if you write down the, the size of the matrices like this next to each other, for them to be multiplication compatible, these inside numbers must be the same. Number of columns must equal number of rows. If they are the same, you can multiply them. And the answer will be this, 2 by 4, 2 by 4. Really, really weird. OK, let's try, let's try another example here. So for example, just one second here. Let me just get my equipment here in order. Let's see if these guys can be multiplied. Well, uh, to check that, what I do is I write down what this is. So this is a 2 by 3. Now remember how this works. You always write down the number of rows by the number of columns. And this is actually a 3 by 2. So the inside numbers are equal. That is, the number of columns here equals the number of um, rows here. So these are compatible. And what's the outcome going to be? Well, the outcome will be a 2 by 2. So in fact, this is going to produce a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, how do, I, how do I proceed? Well, the same way as I did before. To find out what happens in the first row, first column, I go to first row here, first column here, and do that multiplication sum game. So I see 1, 0, mi minus 2, so that's negative 1. To find out what goes in the first row, second column, I go to first row, second column. And what do I see here? I see a 4 
and then I see uh, 21, and then I see another 4. So I see 8 and 21, which is like 29. Now I want to find out what goes in the second row, first column. So I go to the second row here, first column here, and play the game. Bleep, and I just see 1, because I see 1, 0, and 0. And then second row, second column, I go to second row, second column, and I see what? I see a 4. I see a 28 and 0, and so 4 and 28 is like 32. So in fact, the product of these two matrices, a 2 by 3 multiplied by a 3 by 2, is a 2 by 2, and it equals this. Notice that that's much different than this, <laughs> because this, in fact, would be what? Well, this is a, this is a 3 by 2. And this is a 2 by 3. So you can multiply them because they're equal. But now their end result is going to be a 3 by 3. And can you see how I'd find that? Maybe I'll do that for you really fast right now. That would equal, it's going to be a 3 by 3. Well, you would take this times that, so you'd go this way now. So you'd see 1 plus, uh, plus 4. 1 plus 4, which would be 5. Here I'd see a 3 and 16, so 16, 17, 18, 19. Here I'd see a 2 plus 0. Here I'd see a 0 and 7. Do you see how I'm cutting across and going down? Choo, choo. So here I'd see a 0 and 28. Here I'd see a 0 and 0. Here I'd see a minus 1 and 2, which is a 1. I multiply the terms and add up the answers. Here I see a minus 3 plus an 8 which gives me a 5. And here I see a minus 2. So you can see when I multiply them this way, I get this collection of numbers. Yet, when I just multiply them this way, I get a completely different answer. So really weird. Multiplication is really, really strange. First of all, you can't multiply things that look the same. You have to multiply things that have the columns here equaling the rows here, and the answer is actually going to be different depending upon how they multiply. All right, maybe just a couple more quickies. Let's see what I've got here in my bag of tricks. Uh, here's a matrix. Here's another matrix. How about these guys? Are these uh, compatible as they are right now? Well, let's see. This is a 3 by 1. This is a 1 by 3. So they are compatible, and I'm going to get a 3 by 3. So this should give me a 3 by 3. Let's see what that is. OK. Well, what goes in the first spot? Well, this times that. Now, there's no place to go over and down, you see? So it's easy. It's just this times that plus nothing. So it's just 1. What goes here? Well, it's the first row, second column. So first row times second column here. These always give the rows on the, on the left, and these always give the columns on the right. So it's just this, which gives me a 6. Here I have a 10. Now I go to the second row, first column. So I go to the second row, first column, and I see a 3. And then I see an 18. And then I see a 30. Then I have third row, first column, third row, first column. So I see minus 1, minus 6, minus 10. There's the answer. What if I flip them? Can these be multiplied together? They sure can, because this equals that. And this would actually just give me a 1 by 1. This is a 1 by a 1. So in fact, what would I see? I would see 1 plus 18 plus minus 10. So that would be 9. So in fact, this, if I do it this way, would equal just 9. But if I do it this way, I get that. If I do it this way, I get 9. You can see it's tricky business, but the key thing to make sure of is to make sure that the columns on the left equal the rows on the right, and then your net result is going to have the same number of rows as the person on the left and the same number of columns as the person on the right, and you do this kind of activity going through and actually seeing what that product is. Very strange, and I'll explain to you where all this comes from and why something so peculiar like this would really happen. But for now, up next is a game to make sure that you're okay on who can multiply. I'll see you there.